Hello, my name is Thomas Emmanuel and I'm a director at STR, a co-star company. I'm delighted to welcome you to the first of a new series of videos. Every quarter, we will look at a different European country and review hotel performance and outlook. We will start this series in the Netherlands. I firstly wanted to put the Netherlands into a European perspective. This chart shows occupancy from January 2020 with performance indexed on 2019. As you can see, throughout Europe, in most cases, countries have been experiencing a similar occupancy pattern, and the Netherlands is no exception. The pattern is familiar. The initial decline in spring 2020, the slight pickup that summer, the decline during the second wave, the subsequent rebound, and then the arrival of Omicron. You will notice the impact that the arrival of Omicron and the lockdown that Mark Rutter announced starting on the 19th of December this was preceded by protests against further restrictions and because of these factors, along with Austria, another country to announce a lockdown, Dutch occupancy fell significantly. As of the 16th of January, occupancy was at 26% of the level achieved in 2019. If we move to look at ADR, we see some greater differentiation across the various European countries and, as we know, average rate has not been impacted as much as occupancy. The Netherlands does remain something of a laggard, however. Several European countries, including Ireland, Italy, Poland, Portugal and Spain, have all recently seen ADR at higher levels than 2019. But the Netherlands is currently at just 79% of those 2019 levels, so very much an anomaly when looking across the continent. Moving now to look at daily occupancy from the beginning of quarter four. And nationwide performance was picking up in October and into November. One other clear pattern emerges, and that is of weekend peaks. Like so many other markets, recovery was very much driven by leisure travellers, and that same pattern plays out for the Dutch market. The drop-off is also very apparent as cases started to rise again, and post the lockdown, occupancy has firmly been stuck in the teens percentage-wise. To compare to average rates, and as we know, the gap is far smaller, but ultimately it remains. Up until the lockdown was announced, again, we see weekend rate peaks, which is interesting because in normal times, the reverse would be true, driven by corporate business. Moving now to the major cities, with occupancy indexed on 2019 since the start of 2021. It is clear that Amsterdam has suffered more than most. The city usually has such a rich mix of demand drivers, but international demand, corporate demand and group demand has been lacking, and that is clearly seen in the data. Cities with a greater reliance on the domestic markets, such as Maastricht and Den Haag, have held up slightly better, which is again a pattern we have seen replicated globally. 2021 was undoubtedly stronger for secondary markets, which are more reliant on that domestic traveller. A similar pattern emerges when we look at ADR. Maastricht is the leader for much of the year and Amsterdam the laggard. Prior to the latest lockdown, Utrecht and Eindhoven were seeing rates above 2021 levels, but that latest restrictions have altered that. We must hope that as those restrictions lessen, both occupancy and rates start to move in a positive direction as soon as possible. Let's now change tact and look at the future and bring some more positive news. Here we have business on the books in Amsterdam as of the 3rd of January for both this year and last year. I think that there are two new good news stories to look at. Firstly, business on the books is clearly higher this year than last. Whilst it is still muted, the direction of travel when compared to 2021 is a positive one. Secondly, the impact of events is clear to see. I think it is in most people's expectations that they will be able to attend events this year in a way that they have not done since pre-COVID. Peaks are already evident for Stille Omgang in March and the IBC conference in September. That pattern is replicated and even exacerbated when we look at Rotterdam, Den Haag and Utrecht. In fact, business on the books for events such as the ASOP Music, the Invictus Games and Breakbulk all dwarf what we see thus far for IBC. Certainly a ray of positivity for hotels to look forward to without doubt. I would now like to look at the pipeline across the Netherlands. This is our European leaderboard in terms of the number of rooms in the active pipeline. The UK, Germany and Spain lead the way and perhaps surprisingly, 
when you consider the population size, the economic strength, and the leisure attractiveness of the Netherlands, it sits in just 14th position with just under 9,000 keys in the active pipeline. So where are those rooms? Well, as you would expect, Amsterdam leads the way with just over 1,800 keys, despite the restrictions on new hotel developments. Rotterdam follows with just over 1,500 keys, and the Amsterdam suburb of Hoofdorp, which neighbours Schiphol Airport, is in third place with just under 1,000 keys. Then follows Utrecht, Alsmeer, and Den Haag. The pipeline is certainly there, but not aggressive, which should be a positive for existing hoteliers at the, as the market starts to recover from COVID-19. So to finish with our forecast, this is November 2019 forecast for the aggregate of several European cities, including Amsterdam. This is RevPart index to 2019, and we can see by the end of 2022 and the beginning of 2023, RevPAR is closing in on its previous peak. As for Amsterdam, we are forecasting RevPAR recovery in 2024. So whilst a few years away, from where we are today, realistically, the only way is up. STR will, as always, be there with the latest data for you as we track the recovery in the Netherlands and across the rest of the world. Thank you very much for watching and be well.